r slash ask women. Kanj Himeus says. To women, who had a friend circle and best friends, but now have no friend, what changed? Mjoy90 says. I just think I'm unlikable. I also don't have social media, except for did so seem to get excluded for a lot of things. Georgiana Quis says. Two of them moved out of state, then lack of effort on everyone's parts, and then the pandemic really put a damper on me having friends. Luckily, I've always been an introvert, so it isn't something I'm not used to, but I do miss being able to hang out with them at least 3-5 to five times a year in person normally. I mostly just miss being young, and having school do of all my socialization for me. I miss seeing them all the time with no pandemic, and having no responsibilities outside of that. Peacha Sweet Pea says. My best friend backstabbed me and spread rumors. The others blamed me for the abuse my parents put me through. Honestly I only have one guy friend now who has never judged or ridiculed me and that's it. Mayadoff Thessia says. I used to be part of this friend group that started in high school. I had also been dating this guy that started when we were both 15. Jumped to us being 23 and still together. My best friend decided to move to where we were and live with us. She and I had been close for a little longer than I had been dating my BF. So she moves in and starts sleeping with my BF. Of course, my BF and I break up over this and they leave together. I made it clear that she and I were obviously no longer friends. She and my ex ended up only being together for a few months before he moved on to the next girl. A year passes and apparently the guilt of what she had done caught up with her. She told our mutual friend group that she felt guilty but that I wouldn't talk to her. Suddenly those friends start hounding me to talk to her and make amends because she feels guilty. I had absolutely no interest in talking to her. I made it clear to these friends that she had no consideration for my feelings and hurt me horribly. I had no more energy to give her. Most of those mutual friends decided they needed to be there for this girl and to vilify me for not forgiving her. Fortunately, I have new friends now who care about my feelings. Nigan A.S. Givnes says. We all moved for work. Eta, some of us are working on moving back near each other though. Rid Fox Rakin Sox says. I had a group of friends in high school. There were six of us, and we had main pair best friends, but we operated as a group all the time. We were in classes together. We talked every night on the phone, stayed at each other's house, carpooled. Everything. Literally thought of them as my family. I loved my best friend and I have never made another single friend like her. Then everyone graduated and moved. And that was the end of it, if I didn't go seeking them out. Now, I can walk into their place of business, or call them up randomly, and we'll pick right back up, in a way. It's not the same but it's something. But if I don't do it, I don't hear a peep from any of them. Ever. Happened again in college. Pledged a fraternity, thought I made some real friends. People just don't stay around. Now, I don't really make friends anymore and just enjoy moments that happen, when they happen point the. Result is that I have no one in my life, that I can truly share myself, and I expect nothing from anyone, except that they won't be around long. Urban Fi says. I didn't make the best friend choices, and as I matured and moved forward in my professional career, I sort of outgrew the friends that weren't really do much with their lives, which was most of them. I have two genuinely good friends I keep in touch with and hang out with occasionally. r slash ask women. Seastergay says. How do you not take things personal? And what signs do you notice that give you awareness that you are taking things personal? Fatim764 says. Try not to be insecure. Laura30 says. I'm the worst at this. To be honest, I rely on a friend who has a great self-esteem and she helps me see things more objectively and less personal. 
I think I've done some progress with her help, but I still need to work at this. My Virgoi Shaoin says. Practice never taking anything personally. The first step to that is to build confidence in yourself, no one else knows you like you do. Work on your mental health, see a therapist, and work on you. If someone ever says something negative or snarky, just remind yourself that it is more about them than you. Hawcraft Lovewood says. When Simeon is rude, it tell more about themselves rather than about you. Especially as they criticize you all the time. Unfair Sugar 548 says. Self-awareness, I found myself ruining an almost 12-year relationship. My partner would come to me with problems he was having, and I instantly made it about me. After a while, he stopped calling me his person which was heartbreaking. I learned that I'm an anxious attaché, so have been doing tons of research on that. Learning self-soothing techniques. I'm going to therapy and journaling my thoughts. When he comes to me, which isn't often anymore, and I don't blame him, I tell myself this is not about me, it's about how he's feeling, and I need to be there for him. What really did it for me was, when he asked me would you still, be with me, if I acted the way you act. And he'll know, I wouldn't be, so why is he still with me? It's only been about a year, since I've been on this journey of healing. Your trauma is not someone else's to fix and that's how I've been treating him almost our whole relationship. God bless him for sticking with me. Aunt says. We have saying at work. Leave your feelings at the door or they will get hurt. Beyond that developed a really thick skin as a result of bullying in my childhood. Cat Kurt says. I keep in mind that people are not necessarily against you, they are simply for themselves. Struck Bifires says. I know I'm taking something personal when my immediate reaction is to get defensive. If someone brings something to me, like I hurt them, or they feel I'm not being a good friend slash partner, etc. I have to take a minute before responding, because 99% of the time my defenses go up immediately. Even if I don't agree with their perspective, and I feel very misunderstood, it's still important to listen without getting defensive, or trying to prove their feelings about me, or my behavior aren't valid. Unless they're being rude and shitty, name calling, insults, degradation. Then I just try to walk away and not waste my energy fighting. It says a lot more about the person who wants to treat you like shit than it does about yourself. So basically, try not to be reactive and instead be intentional about how you respond to criticism. KVQ516 says. I've been going to therapy to try and help. I take everything personally. It's difficult not to. Cleaning Mama says. Asking questions helps. Sometimes people say stuff that comes out wrong, and they don't mean to be hurtful. I also think about the motivations of the person saying whatever they are saying. What do they need or want? Is this someone who cares about me? Is this something I need to hear? If I can wait a beat before acting, that helps too. Apocalypse Joe says. I mean, I'd have to give a shit about others opinions to take things personally, and, quite frankly, I don't. R slash ask women. Fastbeat7779 says. What your are your kids not allowed to do? ABV1401 says. My son is 5. He's not allowed to handle cleaning products with unsafe ingredients which means some things he simply can't clean. He's not allowed to move pots from the stove. He's not allowed to do errands on his own yet. He's not allowed to start the laundry or dryer on his own. Milk35 says. The dishes, they do it so badly. Sick22 says. Not allowed to use cleaning products by themselves. Not allowed to wash sharp knives. Other than that, it's all good. Fatima Number Snid says. Right now walking the dog solo. He wants to, but he's just not old enough yet. Speed Spectator says. 
My 12Y slash O isn't allowed to do lawn slash yard work. He has awful allergies. Even if he's just raking up pine needles it sets off a sneezing slash coughing episode which then can turn into a full blown asthma attack. It's happened once before, and although we didn't need to take him to the dock, we had to use his nebulizer machine and he couldn't go to school for a couple days. Redrose812 says. I don't let my daughter, Atio, handle cleaning chemicals, with the exception of laundry and dishwasher detergent pods and the occasional Clorox wipe. She generally cleans up her own messes or spills, but is not allowed to clean up broken glass or broken dishes. She is allowed to help me cook slash prepare food, but she isn't allowed to take stuff out of the oven and I don't let her handle sharp knives or raw meat yet. C Red Scallops says. My 14 year old is not allowed to drive. Other than that, I cannot think of anything. Danavel says. Do husbands count? Not allowed to load the dishwasher, or put things away in the fridge as he lacks the Tetris mastery to do so. Angel on duty says. My children are not allowed to handle anything dangerous, such as sharp knives. Nicky Smith 182 says. Wash any of my knives, they are high quality, and I hone them regularly, so they are extremely sharp, he uses gloves and eye protection when using cleaning products, non-toxic, vine gar based, but that's bc the bathroom is his chore. He is the only one in the house with a penis, and doesn't always aim very well. Jujubinic General says. I have a 7y slash oh he's not allowed to use the stove and oven without me. He's also not allowed near cleaning chemicals. Otherwise, he cleans his own room. Helps me with laundry, dishes and prepping food, he uses kid friendly knives. He helps with the shopping list and food shopping weekly. He wants to help. It's great to teach kids chores, basic life skills, when they are willing. My own parents didn't teach me any of these skills, and I won't repeat that mistake. Twinkling Star says. I don't allow my children to handle chemicals or heavy machinery. Safety is our top priority. Siren of a board says. I thought it'd be cute to show my then 14 month old to put her clothes in her hamper Marizo as a sensory activity. Now at 16 months I had to stop her from doing that because I keep finding my clothes in the trash can. That's all for this video thank you for watching please subscribe.